Welcome to the BewareCast, where I teach you about the things that you need to be aware of. In H.G. Wells' groundbreaking 1895 novella, The Time Machine, the author presents a haunting vision of humanity's distant future through the lens of two post-human species, the Eloi and the Morlocks. These creatures are not aliens, but our own descendants, shaped over countless millennia by social division, environmental pressures, and technological advancement. The Time Traveller's journey into the year 802,701 AD reveals a bifurcated world where light and dark, ease and toil, beauty and savagery have taken on literal forms. In this video, We'll take a deep dive into the biology, behaviour, culture, and speculated evolutionary pathways of the Eloi and the Morlocks, exploring what they tell us about human nature, class, and the dangers of unchecked division. The Eloi are the first beings the time traveller encounters in the far future. Superficially human, they are small, childlike creatures with frail bodies, smooth skin, curly hair, and androgynous features. They live above ground in idyllic gardens and crumbling marble structures surrounded by an Edenic landscape. At first glance, their world appears to be a utopia, a post-scarcity paradise of leisure and peace, but this tranquility is deceptive. Biologically, the Eloi appear to be the product of extreme domestication and prolonged comfort. They have little in the way of muscle mass, no apparent diseases, and seem to live without effort. Their teeth are small, indicating a diet of soft, possibly plant-based food. Their senses are dull, and they are easily frightened, showing little curiosity or intelligence. They wear simple tunics, do not work, and spend their days in idle play, eating fruit and sleeping in communal dwellings. Socially and culturally, the Eloi are stagnant. There is no evidence of writing, governance, or innovation. Their language is simple and limited, and their relationships appear shallow. The time traveller notes their lack of individual initiative and emotional depth. This suggests a profound decline from humanity's current intellectual and cultural complexity. Wells presents the Eloi as a warning about what might happen if comfort and security remove all struggle and challenge from life. In losing hardship, they have also lost their vitality. Beneath the idyllic surface world of the Eloi lies a darker truth, the realm of the Morlocks. These pale, ape-like humanoids dwell underground, operating and maintaining the machinery that sustains the Eloi's world. Unlike their surface-dwelling cousins, the Morlocks are physically stronger, more agile in the dark, and possess a more developed sense of purpose, albeit a grim one. Biologically, the Morlocks are adapted to their subterranean environment. They have pale or bluish-white skin from lack of sunlight, large eyes adapted for low light, and long fingers for manipulating machinery. They move with a mixture of animalistic stealth and industrial precision. Their bodies are more robust, their teeth sharper, adaptations hinting at a predatory lifestyle. They are nocturnal, retreating from sunlight and emerging at night to hunt. The Morlocks maintain the ancient machines that still function underground, suggesting a retained, though possibly degenerate, form of technological knowledge. However, their culture is opaque. They have no art or literature, and if they speak, the time traveller never hears it. What is clear is their control over the Eloi. The surface dwellers, once the ruling class, are now cattle nurtured by day and harvested by night. The Morlocks have become the apex predators in a twisted food chain. By the time of the Time Traveller's visit, both the Eloi and Morlocks appear to be in severe decline. The Eloi are weak and culturally stagnant, barely more than children with no curiosity, ambition or ability to defend themselves. The Morlocks, though industrious and physically capable, are parasitic and locked in a rigid cycle. 
neither race shows signs of meaningful innovation or change. Evolution has specialised them to their roles, and now their roles are no longer sustainable. Eventually, the Eloi may be bred into extinction, over-harvested or simply rendered infertile by their fragility. The Morlocks, without their food source and perhaps the knowledge to maintain their machinery indefinitely, may follow shortly after, and then, silence. What happens when both branches of post-humanity are gone? In the final chapters of The Time Machine, Wells' protagonist travels 30 million years into the future. He finds a still, silent world under a dim red sun. Gone are the cities, the people, the animals. In their place, a barren shore, a sluggish sea, and strange, hopping crustaceans, low to the ground and utterly alien. Wells suggests that life has continued, but it has retreated into simplicity. The spark of civilization is long gone. The time traveller sees no signs of intelligence, no fire, no tools. Only a world winding down, growing colder and quieter as the sun itself fades. Could another intelligent species arise from this bleak setting? Perhaps. Evolution never truly stops, but it needs time, stability and selective pressure. If conditions remain right, one of these primitive creatures might begin a new journey toward awareness but the odds are stacked against it. More likely, we are witnessing the last embers of Earth's biological story. Humanity, in both its Eloi and Morlock forms, may have been a brief flare in the vast darkness of time. The bifurcation of humanity and the time machine also reflects ecological adaptation. The Eloi's environment is one of abundance and safety. With no predators or physical hardship, Natural selection favours smaller, more docile traits. The Morlocks, by contrast, live in a world of scarcity and danger. Their biology reflects this. Powerful limbs, heightened senses and communal behaviour geared towards survival at any cost. Each group has adapted perfectly to their niche, but in doing so, they have lost essential aspects of humanity. This suggests that evolution is not a linear path toward progress, but a series of branching responses to environment and necessity. The Eloi and Morlocks are both successful in their own contexts, yet neither retains the full spectrum of what we consider human. Could such a future really unfold? While Wells' scenario is speculative fiction, it taps into real evolutionary and sociological principles. The Eloi and the Morlocks are more than just creatures of fiction, they are reflections of ourselves. Through their divergence, Wells explores themes of class, evolution, and the fragile nature of civilization. His warning is as relevant today as it was in 1895, that without empathy, balance, and unity, humanity could divide into extremes, each losing a part of what makes us truly human. But then again, it could be argued that humanity is already at extremes, and always will be. There will always be an opposing force to a given set of people. All the Eloi and Morlocks are is an extreme form of this. Whether we lean toward passive decadence like the Eloi, or the brutal utilitarianism of the Morlocks, the message is clear. Our future is in our hands. Let us choose wisely.